today we're obviously skinning a coon uh y'all seen this one uh, y'all seen me shoot this out with a bow matter of fact so same video where smoke got snake bit not sure what order these videos are coming out but either you've seen it or you're going to so hey win-win but anyway so this is gonna be a little graphic fair warning to everybody and y'all as y'all know these uh these cleaning and skinning videos uh they're a very very effective way of going broke because they don't make no money but either way this is a labor of love y'all have earned this but if you don't mind just like share subscribe y'all y'all know the banter y'all know the crap the pandering let's uh let's get on with it so first thing first when i'm i'm going to case skin this can that's probably one of the cleanest ways and i'm going to save the hide so because in case old smoke dies hey you got a reminder right so anyways you really do want to get one, I think it's called a deluxe skinning gamble. Well, these things go a long ways, highly suggest them. But either way, when you're cleaning stuff for meat, you need a bucket of water. You need to soak the fur down. So we're gonna, <clears throat> if you was doing this for fur, wetting's a bad thing to do. Actually, you don't want to skin them wet. It's, it, it's a lot worse on the fur because when you're going under the fur, under the skin cutting, the hair wants to stay clumpy and stay together and actually cut the hair in two as opposed to it being a little more on the dry side so it's actually kind of a bad thing plus it takes longer to dry out and it's just bad for the fur however if you get on the ball with it fast enough and you can actually dry them out and such but either way it's that's another video another time right now we're talking about meat so i come right here in the heel right in the pad ain't no point in cutting yourself short now you're going to make a line pretty much straight across and if it's a boy, if it's a girl, you go in between the genitals and the, the butthole, I guess. And if it's a boy, same thing. So there you go, your chini sex. Anyway, just gonna follow her under that and make that line go across. Just like so. And hit the other heel. Like that's one solid cut across. Clean your fur off. Dip your hands in some water. Can't say that enough. If you get hair on the glove or on the knife and it stays there and you touch meat again, you've transferred hair. So yeah, I can't say it enough. Keep your knife clean, keep your hands clean, and go on. Also on a cane and stuff, gloves are not a bad idea. Anything that carries rabies, gloves are not a bad idea. And it's just easier to clean up at the end of the day. So anyways, from here, you're just gonna come in. Now some people just wring the foot all the way around, nothing wrong with that. You might hit your tendons, but that's okay too. Now then, thumb comes in handy. Roll that thumb around. And what that does, that saves you from having to wring the whole thing because you've already separated it. And all you gotta do is just slip your knife in there. Pull down. If you got, now notice I touched fur, clean your hands off, clean your knife. Clean again. Just realized the lighting's pretty bad, so sorry. But anyway, same thing over here. Get that little knife started or whatever knife. Also, got this from a buddy, Clint All Red. I will try to leave some of his Facebook connections down there in the comments, or at least the description. But anyway, thank you for the knife, Clint. It's actually coming in quite a bit handy. I like littler knives. Anyways, same thing. Get that up. Cut that off. Pull that down. Then, these deluxe skinning gambrels. It's like a choke chain on the dog or a choke collar or whatever you want to call them. I'm sure y'all seen them on somebody's souped up bulldog somewhere. Anyways, put that right there. Now then, this one's got a bonus because it's a little boar cane. So. So this one's got a toothpick. And I've actually got a video on how to clean these or whatever, so y'all can look that up. I've also got also got a pile of them right here, so this ain't the first uh, ain't the first boar cone I've skinned just right here in this exact location. Anyways, I'm gonna flip them around. Like I said, we are going for the hide as well. So right here, I'm gonna start in at the tail, right dead center of it. This knife ain't got a great point, but that's okay. It's still getting the job done. And you're gonna go either side of the butthole there. Come out, clean your knife off. And you blow on the coon's butthole if you got to, if you gotta move that fur out of the way so your knife don't transfer no more, but 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to be doing that with my life right now. But anyways, right there, give her a pull. Now this tail, he's little enough I can just pull it out. So I got it pulled out. I'm going to get this knife started right here like that. Now they got a thing called a tail zipper, and those work great. I ain't got one right now, but that knife done pretty good itself. And that tail is split all the way down. Hopefully you can see that. So anyways, clean hands off. And clean knife off. That's crucial too. Now the belly does like to tear out on you, so take a little time just following the seams and get it started. Just like it. Once that started, it's just a pulling game. For those of y'all in the fur market or don't know about it, see the color of the leather? It's what's called blue, and uh, that actually has less value, but we're not doing this for the fur market. That's been crap for a long time. So anyways, for now, I'm just gonna pull on down. And don't get carried away on just one side. Keep it pulled even. If you see something ain't catching up, go over there and fix it. Like if a spot's hanging, fix it. Because especially small cones, you will rip the, the leather on them. You will rip the skin. And right here in the back, you can actually see my two shots that I shot him with the uh, with the arrow, or, or the two arrows. So anyways, get him down. Get your thumb between the arm and the hide. Just like that. Pull it all the way down to the hand. Same thing over here. Pull that one down. Now you got them. Now what I do is I'll come here, spin my camera around where y'all can see, sit your knife in there, just like that. And since we're going for meat, I'm gonna go ahead and take these hands off here. Just reach over the back of your knife and work that blade back and forth if you have to, and they'll just pop right off. Feel free to join it and just, just work. Notice I wasn't sitting there sawing the blade. Touch the, the heel of your knife, the back of the edge, whatever you want to call it. Touch it and just rock it. And it will work through that uh, joint and all the cartilage and the tendons if you got a good edge. And you can grab, pull down, and if you have to, you can get a rag or something and use that rag to hold on to this because this is kind of slick right now. I know some of y'all probably like that motion, but y'all are perverts now. So get your rag or something if you need it. If you don't, just whatever. But if you're doing it all day, I do recommend a rag because that would that sucks when you spend, you know, two or three hours skinning stuff at the end of a trapping day. But either way, them trapping days are long gone, ain't they? <laughs> but anyways, just gonna touch where the white's at. Don't cut the leather. Now this kind of had to give him a headache because them two shots didn't kill him all that well. Uh, so yeah, that kind of sucks. But it is part of it, so his, his skull ain't going to be quite right to what I'm getting at. And we just keep working your knife back and forth. And don't just sit there and keep cutting yourself into a hole, because you'll if you keep going down, down, down right here, you're going to end up cutting leather. So you always aim for the high spots. That's where most people screw up, is they don't aim for the high spots. I know one guy, he made fun of me one time. He goes, man, all you do is just, you can't pick out where you want to cut. You just keep rolling all over the place. Like, well, you got to if you don't want to put a hole in it. But right here, I see ear cartilage. Cut straight down. There's an ear. Now you got a good hole to hang into. Because who don't like a good hole to hang into, right? So anyways, over here, same thing. Straight through that ear cartilage. There's some brain. Like I said, give him a headache. Yeah. So come on down, aiming towards the skull, not down, because you'll cut leather. You always aim towards the skull right here when you're skinning the head out. And right here, coming back, there's the back of the jaw. There's an eyeball in there, but that's a low spot. Change over. Just keep working it back and forth. There's the eye, and here's the jaw. It's the clean side. Hopefully y'all can see that better. But anyways, come on down. And it's as simple as that, y'all. Just keep hitting your high spots and come on down. Like, like Bob Barker would be proud. Just come on down, right? <laughs> Freaking crazy, Peter guy. 
Fun fact, he is well hated on the Cherokee Reservation in the eastern band of the Cherokee in North Carolina. So fun fact, go research that. <laughs> Now the bottom lip, you ain't got much use for, so just reach in there and cut that bottom lip off. And since we're on the head, I'm not saving the head for meat no way, so it don't matter where the fur gets at now. I just skin it down to the cartilage. When you get the cartilage, give her a cut. So that's the hide off of one. I'm gonna turn it right back side out, and I'm gonna let it hang and dry off. It's a good sunny day right now, and it's kind of windy, so. Turn that backwards. There we go. Little old cane height. Got my hands clean. Don't need the head. Now, you could have the head meat, but there's also some glands right down here in this neck, too. So, if you don't want to deal with them, there's one cutting, too, right there. If you don't want to deal with them, just come back a little piece, like so, cut it around. Give that a twist and just wiggle that knife through that joint. We don't have that. Ex we don't have that master to it. Now, I'm gonna come back here. We don't need the butthole. We don't need the tail. So just like that, man. See, just work that joint. It's easy, y'all. I'm telling you. Yeah, if you're sitting there sawing, you're not doing nothing. This is a knife, not a saw. It's meant to cut. It ain't meant to saw. So if you're having a saw, your knife sucks. So. That's just a cold hard fact. Let's get on to the next thing. Now, I'm gonna whoop him around here. And as you can tell, there ain't a whole lot of difference between this and a, you know, maybe a big old fox squirrel, to be honest with you. It's a very young coon. But anyways, I'm gonna reach in right here, get that knife barely started. Like I said, I ain't got a point like I'm used to, but that's okay. I'm gonna get, get barely under the side and keep that knife pulled up, and that's gonna keep the abdominal muscle the stomach muscles away from the gut see that pull it up come up here and i'm going to reach up hugging the inside of the hip because you don't want to stab into this crap sack and his bladder so hugging up come right in between it and see i just open that joint up see how simple that was so that part's done reach in here make sure i'm reaching up filling that diaphragm with my fingers like this pushing them guts out of the way that way i know i'm not going to stab them Come in with my knife, I'm gonna barely miss. And I'm gonna show you, it's just like on a deer. You got this little thing called a xiphoid right here. And that's where his, um, that's where his breastplate's at, right there in the center. You don't wanna go right in the middle, you wanna go off to the side a little bit. There's a natural curve between this rib and that xiphoid. There's one here and there's one over here. As long as you hug your knife in that, and I'm, I keep it angled down because I don't want to stab his stomach. I want to go into that rib cage. I want to go in here like this, okay? So hold them guts out the way. Reach in there, angle down, and he'll open up just like a zipper. There's that rib cage opened up. You see his lungs and heart and everything. Now here's a cool part. Because in one motion, one pull, so to speak, you can reach in there, grab everything, hit that diaphragm, Give it a cut, just a touching it. That's all I'm doing. And you can pull everything out from butthole to windpipe in one pull. Just like that. Now, clean hands again. Clean knife. Keep your hands and your knife clean. Cannot say that enough. I know it's repetitive, but it's, it's fairly important. The same thing, find that joint and just wiggle through that joint. See here? How simple is that? Let's come to this side, find that joint, and just get the wiggling. Look at that. Is that simple or what? And there you have a clean coon. So, as you can tell, ain't no hair on it. Well, there's some hair where the shot went through where them two arrows hit him. But other than that, that's a hairless little coon right there.